Well, today we have a freezer and a sub shop. It's a coal pack. And this thermometer is not working. But it's just not cold enough in here. And this particular freezer and the evaporator coil is up here. And I have a little bit of frost on it. So we either have a leak in the system or the expansion valve isn't feeding the coil evenly. And it could be either one. So that's what we have to determine. I have to go up on top. The compressor is right up here on top of the box. So we're going to go do that. I pushed my uh, scale it <laughs> crack monster on this bad. That's some junk down there or something. Oh well. Try to get that before I lose it. It's on there pretty tight. I mean, I mean it looks like it probably hasn't been taken off in quite a while. Really, uh, 
and I shut the compressor off so I can check everything. I want to check the evaporator. here it's not a good sign and it looks like the expansion valve is not feeding the coil evenly it's feeding the bot the first rung of the coil it looks like it's it's just feeding the first rung of the coil so I have to defrost this and See if it'll take some gas. You just might be low on gas and feeding the first run. But I'll check the inlet and outlet. See if I'm getting proper temperature difference across the evaporator coil. Alright, let me get my torch. Oh look at <laughs> by the way this is set up. The temperature control is touching the uh, ball of ice there. I'm going to have to move that. The ball of ice is fundamentally telling the temperature control that it's cold enough and to shut off. That might be keeping it off too. So what I'll do is I'll just move the, the sensing bulb over to here. I might have to get my torch. this bulb yeah, that poor thing's frozen right in there Now, what's important is the the return air flow. This is the return air duct, pretty much. This is the return air comes through here, and this is sensing the return air, and it uh, it'll it's which will be the actual temperature in the cooler in, in the freezer. I mean, so let's see if I can use this screw.
Okay, you got the ice off of it. Now what I'm going to do is I want to get a valve stem on it. Let's put two wrenches on. Then where it leaked. Okay, now what we want to do is put the temperature meter on it. T1 is in the warmest place, which would be the evaporator. It's the bulb here from the expansion valve that's mounted up here. Put it right next to the bulb. Do it like that. Get it on there good. This be below the lid. And the other one. Here's the expansion valve. I want to get after the expansion valve is like six or eight inches away from it. So that would be a good spot. So that'll give me the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature and it'll show me how much heat is being absorbed into the system. And it'll give me a temperature difference. I'll put that outside the box. I guess we can close the lid and start it up. something concerning. I don't see a solenoid valve on this system and my my suction pressure is 60 degrees and the head pressure is 175 which means it didn't equalize it should be the same so I'm seriously concerned about the expansion valve being closed off okay let's that's the temperature temperature difference between the inlet of the valve of the coil and the outlet of the coil I'll give it a couple of minutes to get cold This is the air TD, the air coming in, it's pretty warm in there right now, that's the air coming out of the 
evaporator coil. No, it's the other way around actually. This is the T2 is the only reason 40. This is the air coming into the, the return air into the coil. glass would be nice on this thing. I could tell if it's low on gas or not. Now I'm, I'm in between it being low on gas or the expansion valve just closed off all the way. So I have to adjust the valve open to see if I get any change. I've got 65 degrees between the inlet and the outlet of the evaporator coil so that shows me that that valve is really closed off. That should be one degree, one to three degrees. Uh, my air coming into the evaporator coil is 26 and going out. <laughs> the other side of the evaporator coil, I'm getting 29. That doesn't make sense. Uh, head pressure is way too low, and suction pressure is low. Now if the valve is closed off, it'll cause my, not enough refrigerant to come back, so the suction valve, the suction pressure will be really low. And it'd be a mistake right now to put gas in the system because if I open the valve up, suction pressure goes up, my head pressure will shoot up. So I don't want to put gas in the system yet. So right now what I'm going to do is adjusting this coil. sign when you have that much frost on the valve like that and you can see the you can see the, the frost going down the frost going down having trouble here holding everything frosted from here which that's not a good sign sometimes a strainer will plug up right over here and here I can't clean the strainer out but you see how it's frosted for the first run and the rest of the tubing is not frosted at all so this shows me that the valve is closed off so Clockwise increases superheat, counterclockwise decreases superheat, so I want to decrease the superheat setting. So I want to open the valve up by going counterclockwise. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, because it's so much, it's about one turn is what that did. Now, you can hear the compressor change or it, the sound already. And you can see the the suction pressure responded very quickly, and the temperature, the TD is 61. And let's see if that. I'm gonna open it up some more.
suction pressure is climbing fast. And my head pressure is also climbing. And you can hear the, the compressor making a higher uh, noise like it's working now. And my TD is dropping pretty fast. Let's put that right here. hear the compressor uh, working now. It's, compl it's complaining. It's got to work hard. It was just freewheeling there for a while. Look, I got 275 and I got 39. Wow. And my TD is too much. Uh, it's is, uh, minus 3, so... I want to change that quickly. I open the valves open too much now. So what I have to do is close the valve off. Look. I want to go clockwise now. second to go up to 300 it's dropped down to 270 but this isn't too bad in a warm place for 404a for head pressure a little lower would be good the suction pressure that's not bad at the beginning of a cycle to have as much as 30 pounds suction pressure for 404 TD is still way too high. So I want to I want to turn it uh, counter I mean clockwise. And that should lower my suction pressure. And it should lower my uh, We have a little wax in the system too that plugged up the expansion valve. See, so I close it off a little bit, and my uh, suction pressure is dropping. Head pressure is dropping a little bit. I don't mind it, it being around 13 or 15, but my TD is way off. Now. 
Want to get that TD down. You can hear the compressor making noise. Is they just turn the music system on apparently. Oh no, it was my phone ringing, that's what it was. 